I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. I really <laughs> want <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Miss Jeanette. And I'm Mr. Matt, and welcome back to our awesome announcements. Welcome back yourself, Mr. Matt. We missed you last week. Thank you, and I missed all of you too, and I'm glad to be here, but I'm also excited to do these announcements with you again. Awesome, let's get right down to it. Now, we thought that today we would bring you an update on our Lowe's and Fishes store. And we've all been hard at work with our Lowe's and Fishes dollars to make a difference. And we're really excited to tell you about how it's going. So let's talk about our city of Calgary first. Did you know that since January, our Lowe's and Fishes dollars have bought meals for 51 kids, we've bought meals for 49 homeless people, and 19 pairs of mittens and scarves have been handed out to them as well. Wow! And did you guys know that in our country of Canada, we bought 20 packs of seeds for our community gardens and supported outreach to over 40 communities? Finally, we've helped people all around the world. We've bought clothes for nine kids in India, supported four clean water initiatives in Cambodia, and amazing, we've bought over a hundred Bibles for people in places like Ukraine. Wow, you guys, you've been doing such an amazing job with your loaves and fishes dollars, and we are so excited to see you helping others with them. And it's a great way to show the love of Jesus to our world. Remember, we all have the chance to earn loaves and fishes dollars, and you can do it in one of three ways. Number one, bring a friend to church with you and invite them to watch with you online. Number two, memorize your Bible verse and tell it to your leader or the grown-up in your house. And number three, read your Bible three times a week and make sure to share it with a grown-up in your house or your leader at church. And don't forget our offering. You can go ahead and give your offering right now because we want to help as many kids go to camp as possible. And I know we can do it. And if you drop your offering up at Central Campus, make sure you say it's for Miss Gianna. And now it's challenge card time. We need hats. We do. To the hats. All right, everybody. We're back. And we are so excited to find out who wins our pizza supper draw. Woo! And we actually had three campuses bring us back challenge cards this month. Good job, guys. All right, Mr. Matt, would you like to draw first from Bear's Paw Campus? Yes, I will. Here we go, guys. Let's do a drum roll. Oh. I'm so excited. It's Kale. Yay. Congratulations, Kale. Good job, guys. All right, I'm going to draw next from Bridgeland yes. Campus. Here we go. Ready? All right. Got one. I like this one. I like this one. I'm opening this one. This one is for Samantha. Oh, Good job, yes. Samantha from Bridgeland Campus. Congratulations. All right. So we have Kale and Samantha, and this one is Central Campus. Mr. Matt, can All you right. draw us a winner from Here Central Campus? Here we go, Campus? friends. Ready? Drum roll. Kaden! Right. Congratulations, Kaden! Good job! Alright, so congratulations to Kale, Samantha, and Kaden. You guys won the pizza draw. I will be calling you later this mm -hmm. week to arrange to drop off pizza for your family. If you didn't win this time, or if you didn't get your challenge card in, that's okay. There's always another month, so <laughs> make sure you get it for next time for next month's pizza draw. Exactly. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today for our awesome announcements. See you next week. Bye! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four, <laughs> five, what's six? Six, seven, No eight. way. Hi everyone, my name is Milana. And my name is Bono. We're super excited to see you guys today. And I brought something special along with me. Take a look. Oh, is that a present? Who's it for? Maybe it's for me? Oh, I'm sorry, but it's not for you. It's actually for me. It was given to me by my mother. Oh, well, that's really nice of her. What is it? I'm glad you asked. Ta-da! Oh, wow, that's... Paintbrushes, that's a lot of paintbrushes. Why so many? Well, you see, it's for my art hobby. Each brush is a different size, and that gives very different textures and lines and styles when I'm making my art. Wow, so why are some of them the same size? Oh, well you see, those are for different types of paint. Watercolor is not the same kind of paint as acrylic, and both are different from oil paints. Wow, I, I didn't know any of that, that's pretty cool. I, I didn't know you were good at art. Well you see, I'm not so good, but I am okay at it. Okay. I'm getting better though, and that's why my mother 
She thought I could use a gift like this to help me out. That is a pretty cool gift. Your mom is so nice to give you that. Well, you see, she really is. And I'd love to be an artist. She taught some new brushes could help me get closer to my goal. Yeah, you know, receiving a gift ties into the focus of our story today. Did you know that those of us who follow Jesus all receive a special gift from the Holy Spirit? Whoa, is the Holy Spirit going to give me more paint brushes? Because I could really use some more paint instead. I used up all my green while painting those trees. <laughs> yeah, I, no. Uh, see, the Holy Spirit isn't going to give you more paint brushes or more paint. The gifts we're talking about today are a different kind of gift. Oh, interesting. Let's hear our Bible story for today and learn what kind of gifts you mean. Great idea. Slapstick Theater. Aquila and Priscilla. This is Aquila. hey -o! Who was a Jewish man who was married to Priscilla. Hi! They lived in Italy until Claudius Caesar forced all of the Jews to move out of Rome. Get out of here. So they went to live in Corinth. There, they worked as tent makers and met Paul. Hey! Who told people about Jesus. Hey, come on! Paul lived and worked with Aquila and Priscilla while he was in Corinth telling people about Jesus. Aquila and Priscilla went on a trip with Paul to the port of Ephesus. Hey, see you in a bit. While they were in Ephesus, they heard a man preaching named Apollos. That's me. Hey, hey William. William. Huh? And taught him more about God. Oh, all right. They remained friends with Paul. Yeah! And helped him in his mission to tell people about Jesus. Hey, thanks for that. They once even risked their lives for Paul. Oh, thanks for that too. When Aquila and Priscilla went back to Corinth, they gathered people to their home for church. Paul told the people in a letter that he was thankful for Aquila and Priscilla and their service to the church. Did you catch the spiritual gift that the Holy Spirit gave Aquila and Priscilla in our story? I'm not quite sure I did. I definitely didn't see any paint or any brushes. I didn't even see a gift bag. Can you help me understand what the gift was? I sure can. It can be a little hard to figure out. You see, the Holy Spirit doesn't give us tangible gifts. Tangled gifts? <laughs> no, not tangled gifts. Tangible gifts. The Holy Spirit doesn't give us gifts that you can touch or see or put in a box. That explains why I didn't catch it in the story today. But they were there. The Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts to those who follow Jesus. And Aquila and Priscilla were followers of Jesus. So if I follow Jesus too, and I'm really good at soccer, math, and bacon bread, does that make those my spiritual gifts? Uh, no, you're just good at soccer. And maybe you're really smart and good at math and and maybe you just make good bread. Those are just natural abilities. See, when God made you, he gave you natural abilities and talents that you're just good at. <laughs> you can practice and train and improve your natural abilities and talents. Spiritual gifts are different. The Bible includes a few lists of many spiritual gifts that are given to Christians. Spiritual gifts are supernatural. They're given to us by the Holy Spirit who empowers us to use these gifts and to serve and encourage others, to strengthen the church and to help us grow in our faith. Okay, so what does that look like in my everyday life? That's a good question. Let's use your soccer as an example. Okay, so you may have the spiritual gift of evangelism. You love telling people about Jesus. When you're at soccer practice, the Holy Spirit will show you who he wants you to share the good news of Jesus with. He'll help you with the words to say, give you courage, and help you build friendships with people who don't yet know who Jesus is. Some of you may have spiritual gifts of teaching, serving, or even leading others. And there are more gifts that are listed in the Bible. So does that mean when I use my spiritual gift, people will notice how awesome I am and give me plenty of awards for being a good leader, server, or teacher? <laughs> no, actually, when you use your spiritual gift, it isn't meant to bring attention to yourself or to put you in the spotlight so you can feel all good about yourself. 
The purpose of a spiritual gift is to bring glory to God. The Holy Spirit gives one of these spiritual gifts so that you can encourage, bless, and build up people around you. We can see spiritual gifts when people are using them. For example, remember Priscilla and Aquila from our story? They let Paul live with them. They taught Apollos new things about Jesus and they invited people into their home for church. They welcomed people in their home and served them practically meeting their needs. So what spiritual gift did they have? I still don't know what it is. Mm, they had the gift of service. Aquila and Priscilla were gifted by the Holy Spirit to serve and help others. When Paul needed a place to live and a job, they let him stay with them and they gave him work. When they saw that Apollos needed to grow in his understanding of the way of Jesus, they welcomed him into their home and they helped him. Not only did they serve Paul and Apollos, but they also helped people who were seeking Jesus, who already were following Jesus. Aquila and Priscilla invited people into their home for church gatherings so they could hear about the good news of Jesus. The Holy Spirit gave them the strength, the patience, and the desire to use their gifts of service in this way. They didn't want everyone to look at them and say, wow, you're so amazing. All they wanted was to glorify God and to introduce people to Jesus and bless other Christians. Oh, I think I get it. God wants us to use our spiritual gifts to give service to Him. They aren't for us, right. they are for Him. So if I had a spiritual gift of wisdom, which means the Holy Spirit helps me remember important truths from the Bible, He wants me to use that gift to help others make good decisions and point them back to Jesus. That's right. Or, here's another example. I'm thinking of, if I notice people who are sad or facing higher situations, and it makes me feel sad too, and I want to help them, I may have the gift of mercy, and the Holy Spirit then gives me ideas on how to help them and excitement in serving them until they feel better. Exactly. For every person who has accepted Jesus as their Savior, they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives them a spiritual gift. When we all use our gifts and work together like one body with many parts, encouraging and building up Christians and introducing people to Jesus. We will grow in our gifts over time through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that reminds us of a really important bottom line. Let's say it together. The, the Holy Spirit, Spirit gives us gifts. gifts. Awesome. Let's say it one more time. The, the Holy Spirit, Spirit gives us, us gifts. gifts. Great job. It's cool that the Holy Spirit gives us spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me of our Bible verse. Let's all stand together and say them. Okay. All right. You guys ready? All Here right. Go. Let's go. There, there are different kinds of gifts, but, but they are all given to believers, believers by the same Spirit. There are different ways to serve, but the same God is working in all these ways and in all people. 1 Corinthians 12, 4, and 5. Awesome. Let's say it again. Let's do it. Okay. There are different kinds of gifts, but they are all given to believers by the same Spirit. There are different ways to serve, but the same God is working in all these ways and in all people. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and 5. Awesome. You guys could sit down. You know, Bono, you should keep practicing your art, which is a talent that you have. But even more importantly, make sure you use your spiritual gift to serve God. Absolutely. I can't wait to use my spiritual gift this week and serve Him. Awesome. Thanks for coming today, friends. We'll see you next time. Bye, and I'll Bye. see you next time.
Christmas. 